The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Now let's take a breather with four-time Olympic gold medalist Janet Evans and our Marissa Copeland. Goggles, cap, tank suit, $412. Five years of private coaching, $75,000. Airline tickets to Sydney, $3,000. Winning gold at the Olympics, priceless. Sort of. That's Janet Evans. She swam in three Olympics. She holds four gold medals, and she holds world records in the 400, the 800, and the 1500 meter freestyle. Hey, Janet. <laughs> have you ever tried any of the shorter races? I have. Sometimes I swim the 200 meters. Because I was thinking you would rule at the 50 and the 100 meters. You know, it's funny. Whenever I swim those races, I get last place. But how can that be? I mean, if you win at the 800 and the 1500, the 100 meters should be a cakewalk for you. I mean, think about it. It's like if I can lift 200 pounds, then 10 right. pounds should be simple. Right, but... It's funny because it really doesn't work that way. Well, how come? How can you win in the longer races and not in the shorter ones? Well, it has to do with your muscles. But you've got tons of muscles. I know, but it has to do with how your muscles work. Well, uh, how do muscles work? <sighs> it takes muscles to swim. <gasps> in fact, it takes muscles to do just about anything. Muscles are how we breathe. Your heart is a muscle, eating takes muscles, even bedding on the couch travel surfing takes muscles. But did you ever think about what makes our muscles work? Sheer rippling dynamic muscle. Let's say these are muscles. They're made up of fibers of single elongated cells several millionths of an inch wide. Okay, that's tiny. And there's even smaller strands inside. But that's too small for us to think about. Let's just stick with this. All right, how do they move? Not moving. All right, keeping it really simple, muscles work something like this. See, it twitched. Muscles respond to chemical stimulation, and they contract. And that contraction is how they move. Now, there are two different muscle types in our body, and they both work pretty much the same way, except for one contracts quickly, and the other contracts slowly. That's why the two different muscle types are called fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. The key is this, because this is what gives your muscle the energy to act. It's a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Without it, your muscles aren't going anywhere. This is a molecule of ATP. Well, sort of, but you get the idea. See? It's made up of adenosine and three phosphates. Triphosphate, three, get it? OK, so now what happens? Inside the muscle, ATP comes into contact with an actin molecule. When that happens, the ATP immediately decomposes and one of the phosphate groups breaks off. Yeah, but the chemical bond between these phosphates is really pretty strong. So when the bond finally breaks, oh, it releases a lot of energy. So now we only have two phosphates and adenosine. So now it's called adenosine diphosphate. Di, two, get it? ADP. And we have all this energy running around. That's the energy that the muscle uses to contract. So it gets used up. Yeah, it gets used up. <laughs> So now all we have is this ATP molecule over here and this lonely phosphate hanging out here in the corner. So, what happens next? Well, the muscle uses up the next ATP molecule the same way. Yeah, but here's the problem. You can't keep using the ATP molecule to make your muscles move. If you don't replenish it, the ATP in your muscles will be used up in seconds. 
Where do you get more ATP from? You can't drink it. You can't eat it. It doesn't come in energy bars and power drinks. You know, the only way to get more ATP is to make it. And to do that, you have to combine ADP with that phosphate molecule to make ATP. And to do that, you need energy. See? ATP. You need energy to reconstruct the ATP molecule. Now it can be broken down again and used by the muscles as energy. It's this energy and where it comes from that is the secret to winning in sports. Your body is amazing. Because muscles are so important to its survival, it has not one, not two, not three, but four different ways to get energy to regenerate ATP. The first two ways are aerobic. That means they use oxygen. The first way your muscle has to create ATP is called the ATP-PC process. There's a substance called phosphocreatine already present in the muscles. When it decomposes, it gives off creatine and a phosphate group and makes energy in the process. This energy interacts with ADP, which triggers the production of ATP. This process doesn't need any oxygen to happen, but it doesn't take long to use up all the phosphocreatine in your muscles. You've just used up all the phosphocreatine in your muscles. Well, the ATP PC process is only good for the first 50 meters when the intense activity is 30 seconds or less. But that's not the only source your body goes to to replace energy for ATP. There's a second source of anaerobic energy that can kick in. She's right. The second anaerobic energy source is called anaerobic glycolysis. When you eat carbohydrates, your body just digests them down to a simple sugar called glucose. Now, glucose is stored in your liver and in your muscles as glycogen. Now, glycogen and glucose can be broken down without oxygen to help create the energy to produce ATP. Mm, I've called anaerobic glycolysis, and it works pretty good. But the problem is, it produces a waste product called pyruvic acid. And without oxygen immediately available, pyruvic acid becomes lactic acid, which is a very hard thing for your body to get rid of. So it builds up in your muscles, which is no good. The lactic acid in your muscles and blood builds up after a minute or two to the point where there's a decrease in muscle force and a slowdown in the production of ATP. So anaerobic glycolysis is only going to help us in races of under a minute or two. Right, for the 100 or 200 meter, anything longer than that and the lactic acid starts to slow you down. Okay, so we've reached the limit of what anaerobic production of energy can do. Right, so for anything longer than the 200, you start using your aerobic processes. The first of these is called aerobic glycolysis, because it's basically the same process we just looked at, but with the introduction of oxygen. Remember, we just said that anaerobic glycolysis produces pyruvic acid as a waste product, that without oxygen becomes lactic acid, Well, with oxygen, pyruvic acid decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. These are waste products that your body can remove easily. And there's no lactic acid buildup, so the creation of energy for ATP production can go on indefinitely. So where does this oxygen come from? Well, from your breathing. That's what makes you breathe hard when you're using your muscles. In the first minute or two of activity, your breath and heart rate go up because they're trying to provide oxygen to your blood. The blood provides oxygen to your muscles for use when they've depleted their anaerobic sources of energy. But eventually your body's going to use up the glycogen or glucose it's stored. She's right, you know. There's one more source of energy for ATP synthesis. It's a process called aerobic fat metabolism. 
When fat and oxygen combine, they also produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. For races like the 50 and even up to the 200, a swimmer technically doesn't need to breathe at all. They're not performing long enough to burn up all their phosphocreatine and then glycogen. But as the distances increase, the swimmers need to use oxygen to react with the glycogen or fat. So they need to breathe. The shorter races use more anaerobic processes to get the energy for ATP production. My races use more aerobic processes. So maybe I don't know have enough phosphocreatine or something. That's pretty close. Well, should I take creatine supplements? Well, actually, research has shown that creatine supplements don't help. It has more to do with muscle type. Remember what we said before? There are two types of muscle fibers in your body, fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers. As you might expect, fast twitch fibers are better for short bursts of very strenuous activity. Also, as you might expect, Fast twitch fibers like this wing are better at anaerobic energy production for rebuilding ATP. Slow twitch fibers are better for longer sustained activities like the 400 meters and up. Slow twitch fibers don't tire as quickly. Slow twitch muscle fibers tend to be more efficient at aerobic energy production for rebuilding ATP. You know how the turkey has white meat and dark meat? Well, the white meat is the fast twitch muscle fiber, and the dark meat is the slow twitch muscle fiber. It's darker because the slow twitch muscle fiber depends more on blood to get the oxygen for its energy production. So I probably have more slow twitch muscle fibers, which give me greater endurance. Right, and that's why you're better at swimming the longer distances. OK, so my body and muscles are better suited to producing ATP aerobically. But why do I have slow twitch muscle fibers? Is it training? Well, part of it is training, but they also found out that people have different ratios of fast twitch to slow twitch fibers. So it's also probably genetic. Oh, so you make the best of what you got. Yeah. OK, so what did we learn? That ATP is what makes muscles work and to this by ATP takes energy. <laughs> And that energy can be created aerobically with oxygen or anaerobically without oxygen. There are two types of anaerobic and two types of aerobic processes to create energy for ATP. Mm -hmm. And there are two different types of muscle fibers, fast and slow twitch, that each work better for different types of exercises. Okay, that's great. <laughs> There's still a lot that scientists don't know about how and why muscles do what they do. Someday, maybe we'll know more about muscles. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to figure it out. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank Janet Evans and our students, Emily Tom, Megan Tom, Janet Valenzuela, Jim Hancock, Kristen Bali, John Warp, and their teacher, Jeff Rodriguez from Anderson High School and the Mission Viejo Natadors for helping us out today here on ESPN Sports Figures Breathing Victory. Hey, come on, I need my ATP. We'd like to thank today's athletes for donating their time to help put your brain in the game. I'm Reese Davis, and we'll see you next time on Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, figures. Put, put your, your brain, brain in the, the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.